In this class, we learn a brand new technique. It's called integration by parts. It's basically the antiderivative version of the product rule for derivatives. So u substitution was the reverse of the chain rule, um, and integration by parts is the reverse of the product rule. So simply looking at the integral of 3x times cosine x dx, we can't integrate it because if it said 3x plus cosine x, we could do it term by term, but you can't do you can't go factor by factor when you're integrating. So we have to do some something um, that undoes a product. So we need this new technique called integration by parts. The formula says that the integral of u times dv, so this is a product, u times dv, is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay. u and dv are both functions of x. You can check out where that formula comes from, the derivation in your book, but we're just going to practice using it for now. So we'll do a few together. So we have to choose a u and a dv <coughs> um, from the product that I'm given in my integrand. So this is 3x and cosine x. And I have to choose what's going to be u and what's going to be dv. So I've got u and dv. So this is my first step. So they're going to each going to be a factor of the integrand. Once I have u and dv chosen from the integrand right there, I need to be able to take an antiderivative of v because the, in the formula I have a v. So once I have dv, I need to be able to take its antiderivative in order to use the formula. Um, and a general rule it doesn't always work. You might have to go back and retry, choose a different u and dv. But as a general rule, you want to choose a dv that's the most complicated thing you know the antiderivative of. Okay, so 3x and cosine x. Those are sort of my two options here to choose as u and dv. So which one is more complicated and I know it's antiderivative? Cosine x, yeah. I know the antiderivative of both of them, but cosine x is a more complicated function than 3x. So I'm going to let dv be the cosine x with the dx, right? Because when the, the one that has the um, the d's on it, they both belong in the same sentence. All right, and so then u is just going to be the 3x. So I've encapsulated the entire integrand, including the dx. I've chosen part of it to be u and part of it to be dv. Once I know u and dv, I need du. The, um, the formula calls for u and v, right? I have u. To get v, I need to take an antiderivative of dv. And then I need a v, gonna, about to do that, and a du. So du is going to be the derivative of u. All right. I'm going to write this. du dx is the derivative of u with respect to x. What is du dx? 3. OK. But instead of writing it as du dx, um, I'm using these differentials, du and dx's, to sort of be separate things. So think about multiplying both sides by dx. So du is 3 dx. So I've got du. Now I need v. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. So v is sine x. Then dv dx is cosine x. And I just sort of multiplied both sides by the dx there. All right, so I have all the pieces that show up in the formula. Now I just have to plug them all in. Okay, So my integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. So now I just start plugging in the stuff that I wrote over on the right, u times v. So I have 3x sine x minus the integral of v times du. So v is sine x, du is 3 dx. So this is the integral of 3 sine x dx. So 
so the beauty here is that I started with an integral I could not evaluate, 3x cosine x, and I've sort of taken it um, backed up a step so that now my integral is evaluatable, right? When I plug into this formula, my new integral is 3 sine x dx. I can take the antiderivative of that. So I have 3x sine x. What is the antiderivative of sine x? Yeah, it's going to be negative 3 cosine x. So I have minus a negative, so this becomes a plus 3 cosine x plus c. Okay, one more. This time we're going to do a definite integral, so it has bounds. So remember, the whole idea with a definite integral is first do the indefinite integral and then plug in the bounds. So I'm going to start by just trying to do the integral of ln x dx. No bounds. I'm just going to try to use by parts to evaluate this. So I have to choose a u and a dv. All right, so if my general um, rule about how to choose u and dv is to choose dv to be the most complicated thing you know the antiderivative of. This is just a single function ln x, right? If I knew its antiderivative, I would just I would be done. I don't wouldn't need to do by parts. So ln x cannot be my dv because I don't know its antiderivative. It's got to be my u. Okay, so once I've made u ln x, what's left to be dv? Just the dx. Okay, so then du, all right, so once I've chosen u and dv, um, I calculate du and v. So the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, so this is going to be 1 over x dx. And then the antiderivative here, I take the derivative, antiderivative of both sides and I get v equals x. So I plug into my formula, the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so u times v, so that's x ln x minus the integral of v du. So that's x times 1 over x dx. And then I'm just going to simplify. So this is x ln x minus the integral of x times 1 over x is 1. So this is x ln x minus, what's the antiderivative of dx? Antiderivative of 1, x. So there's my antiderivative, x ln x minus x plus c. But on this one I want to do bounds. This one I have bounds. So I take an anti I took the antiderivative. Now I just have to evaluate it from 1 to e. So the integral from 1 to e of ln x dx is the antiderivative of ln x dx, which I just calculated x ln x minus x evaluated from 1 to e. Remember, any antiderivative will do for the fundamental theorem, so we typically just make the c 0. So now I plug in the e. So I have e ln e minus e, and then plug in the 1. 1 times ln 1 minus 1. Okay, so what's the ln of e? 1. So this is um, e minus e, which is 0, minus, what's the ln of 1? 0. So this comes out to 1. 0 minus negative 1.
So note that integration by parts is kind of a way to undo the product rule, and it transforms an integral involving the product of two functions into another integral, which may or may not be easier to deal with. Hopefully it's easier. So furthermore, integration by parts is good for integrating products of two functions, one of which gets better when you take a derivative, and the other of which doesn't get too much worse when you take the antiderivative. So by parts is also a good technique um, if you're integrating inverse trig functions or a log function. So we just did it for LNX. So often when you see an LNX or an inverse trig function, um, you're going to think, oh, maybe I should try by parts. So some good suggestions for you, um, sort of in descending order, right? If you see an LNX or an inverse trig function, make that a U, okay, um, above a polynomial. Like I said, um, choose the thing for DV to be the most complicated thing that you can still integrate. So suggestions for dv are trig functions, e to the x functions. Um, and that's it. I want you to try a few. Call me over if you get stuck.